Welcome back to the Fast Break on WEGL 91.1 Auburn. I am Ryan LaVoy. Alongside of me is J.J. Jackson and Chris Williams. And we're going to talk about two Eastern Conference teams to wrap up our team power rankings for the day. Uh, And we'll start by talking about the Toronto Raptors head coach Dwayne Casey. And they made a couple interesting moves in the offseason. They uh, lost Amir Johnson and Lou Williams, sixth man of the year, but they brought in Damari Carroll from the first place Atlanta Hawks and also brought in Bismack Biombo in a trade uh, from the Hornets, or no, signed from the Hornets, and then Luis Scola as well. And so Toronto, um, who was a very solid team going 49-33 and 33 last year, with some subtractions but some additions that I think almost balance out. It's just, are they going to get over the hump? I think this is going to be a good team in the Eastern Conference, but you look at them, they've lost in the first round the past two seasons. They play well in the regular season, and then they get to playoff basketball, and, I, you know, they just... They don't aren't able to get over that hump, and part of that, guys, is that the past two seasons they've ran into a team led by Paul Pierce in that first round, and Paul Pierce has knocked him out both times. He's now in the Western Conference, so that won't be a problem for it. But they've got talent. Damari Carroll was a big signing for them. You know, gave him a lot of money to pry him away from Atlanta. He comes over, great defender for them. He improved his jump shot last season. We saw that, and then I love the Bismack Biombo signing. As a Hornets fan, I'm sad that he's no longer there just because of what he brings defensively and able to get all the rebounds and uh, start your offense. But that's a big pickup for them. And then, you know, Corey Joseph, they put a lot of money into him, the the backup guard from the San Antonio Spurs. And my big thing with him, he didn't get a lot of playing time with the Spurs because he was behind Tony Parker and their great organization. But is he ready to step up and be the guy? Yeah, I mean, I looked at look at this team, and last year they came out of the gates like guns a blazing. I mean, this team won. They were probably in the top, one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference until maybe like December or January. I think they made it to 30 wins really fast. And then they just kind of, after All-Star break, they just kind of fell off. And if it wouldn't have been for such a strong first half, they wouldn't have um, even had that. I can't, were they the four or the five seed? I think they were the four seed because I think, yeah, they were the four seed in, in the Wizards had to go to Toronto first, and they still swept them. But it, if it wouldn't have been for such a strong start, they wouldn't have had as good of a record as they had. And it was just really confusing what happened with this team. Um, Kyle Lowry, to me, was still good last year, but wasn't as impressive as he was the year before. And DeMar DeRozan and Terrence Ross. DeMar DeRozan had a, a really good showing at Team USA Basketball two summers ago, came back last year, and... To me, when he plays in the league, I see all this stuff from the Drew League of like dunks he makes and plays he makes. And he, I mean, watching him outside of playing in, in Toronto, he's a fantastic player, but I just haven't ever seen him do anything that's wowed me in Toronto. Um, and Damari Carroll to me was a good signing. I was surprised he left Atlanta. I thought Damari Carroll was going to stay in Atlanta because um, I, I just thought that. He had that kind of bond and chemistry with the the Hawks organization. Um, This team, to me, is definitely not any better than they were last year. And to me, this is a team that has high highlight points, but nothing that just scares me when I see them walk on the court. Definitely when you lose Amir Johnson and Lou Williams, it's going to hurt you just because of what they bring to your basketball team. But I like their bench this year. I think the fact that now you get to move Terrence Ross to the bench uh, if you're projected to start Damari Carroll, I like that move. I think Terrence Ross is going to do well in that position. And then, guys, last week, you know, we kind of had that breaking news update that came in that the Timberwolves were going to buy out Anthony Bennett's contract. And it was announced today at the start of Media Days that. Anthony Bennett has officially reached an agreement to join the Toronto Raptors. The Canadian himself, he's going home, and you know it'll be exciting to see if the former number one overall pick can turn his career around back home in Toronto. Yeah, absolutely, and being from Canada, um, that that could really help him. Um, he's obviously got some. Ta- he's got a lot of talent. Being if you're the one pick, you're not going to be without talent, and so it's doable. I I'm, I think I'm a little higher than you guys are on Toronto. I, I, Lowry and DeRozan, their best two players, had some injury problems at times last year. I think that's kind of why they started the fall off. 
Lou Williams was not essential to their team, in my opinion, because what he was doing is he was the sixth man uh, that bringing a lot of shooting off the bench. Well, I think Terrence Ross can fulfill that role for Toronto. I think Carroll gives them a little better defense, uh, which they kind of lacked at times. So I think this team is fine, actually. J- Valanchun has played very well, and a uh, good rebounder, and can fill it up. I think this team is okay, honestly. I think their big man definitely got better this offseason when you yeah, bring Valanci- in Scola and Biombo yeah. and then Valanchunas uh, coming back. Yeah, you signed Valanchunas to the to the extension off his rookie deal. Uh, Ryan, I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how I want to say it. I think Toronto is as good as they were last year, but I think the rest of the East got better. Maybe I think that's the best way I can put it. Um, you know, this Raptors team – if this was last season, all the teams were the same way. The Pacers were, uh, you know, without Paul George and kind of in a mess. The Heat were um, hurting without Chris Bosh and, and everything that happened with the Heat last year. But now these teams are better. The Celtics are better. Um, the Bucks, who we're about to talk about in just a second, I think are, are better now. So it's not that I think the Raptors got significantly worse than they did last year. I think the rest of the East just got a little bit better. And that's the only reason I, that I voted – to put the Raptors here in this spot um, below the Bucks, who we're going to talk about next. So, are we are we consensus to move on to the Milwaukee Bucks now? Yeah, and, and that's fair. Uh, we'll move on to Milwaukee. I I personally would have Milwaukee before Toronto, but that's okay. Um, so now we're talking about Milwaukee Bucks, and uh, they certainly have a wealth of young talent with uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, you know, they brought in Greg Monroe. Jabari Parker will be returning from the torn ACL. I don't think at the start. Will he be available at the start of the year? He's, yeah. He's working okay. out and he's good to go. Okay. And so um, this team showed a lot of promise last year. Parker's injury hurt, but they were still able uh, to make the playoffs without him. And so, um, you know, Connor Williams still, you know, a very good passer. Uh, can he find a jump shot, though? But Chris Milson certainly has the jump shot the other wing. Uh, so definitely this is a young upstart team for sure. I just look across this this lineup, and I just see talent. I mean, Michael Carter-Williams, yeah, he's not, you know, he has the size and the length of people who are, like, comparing him to Magic Johnson. He's nowhere near Magic Johnson, but he just physically is gifted. Same thing, Giannis Antetokounmpo, he hasn't found it just yet, but, boy, when he does, it is going to be nasty as long as he can stay in Milwaukee and they can hold on to him. Um and the same for Jabari Parker. He, I, I felt so bad that he got hurt so early last year, didn't get a whole lot of playing time. So I'm not expecting him to come out and just start uh, running over opponents night in, night out. But this team is just young. They have so much talent. Damian Inglis is not anyone to look over you know, as a backup at the small forward position. Um, and then you still have Grievous Vasquez, Jared Bayless coming in. Off the bench, Miles um, Plumley, who got traded uh, from Phoenix to Milwaukee in that trade that sent Michael Carter Williams and Tyler Ennis um, last year. Miles Plumley, I think, is very good. John Henson, still a good player, and Greg Monroe, I thought, was a huge sign for them. I think outside of Detroit, you separate Greg Monroe and Andre Drummond. I think we're going to see both of those guys have better years apart from each other than they did when they were on the same team. So I'm excited to watch this Milwaukee team this year, especially with head coach Jason Kidd. I am too. I'm I'm super excited. It's just, are they really ready to live up to the hype? Because you're right, Chris, they are so young. When I look at the team, you know, the first thing I see is, wow, this is a very young team. Wow, they're very, very long and tall players on the team. When I look at it, I see two Duke Blue Devils, which makes me happy. But besides the point, uh, I – you know, Jabari Parker, we talk about it. I think he's going to be the focal point of their offense, and it's going to be very interesting to see how he responds to that torn ACL injury. I follow him on social media and that kind of thing, and he spent his entire offseason in Durham, you know, recuperating and getting back to full strength from that torn ACL with the Duke staff. Uh, and so I think he's ready to go, and it's going to be exciting to see this team going forward. Not to mention they got Greg Monroe. We haven't even mentioned his name yet, but that's a big signing for them this offseason. Yeah, Greg Monroe is certainly an upgrade. John Henson is a very good defender and athletic, but Monroe can do more things offensively, but Henson will still get a lot of minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, this team, the, I, one thing is that outside of Chris Milton and, and O.J. Mayo off the bench, I don't know if this team can shoot 
really, um, because Anta Takumo does not have an outside game, Michael Carter Williams does not have an outside game. I'm a little concerned that they're not going to be able to stay with high scoring teams shooting wise. Uh, the NBA has become such a three point game. You need not one, not two, but three uh, really quality three point shooters. And so I think that would be my one beef with this team is that they don't have a great perimeter presence, but uh, they certainly have uh, the young athletic players that you that can compensate for that. Uh, so much potential that has started to develop already with Jabari Parker and Anta Dekumbo. Uh So I think this team is really promising. Um, you know, Jason Kidd was kind of criticized after his time in Brooklyn, kind of a messy inning after one year. Uh, but he certainly did a good job with all these young players. And, and maybe he can teach Michael Carter-Williams a thing or two because Kidd certainly knows how to dish the ball around. And when we talk about Jason Kidd and, and developing, Jason Kidd, you're right, was such a good passer in all the years he had growing up in the Dallas and New Jersey Nets organizations. And it wasn't until he made his return to Dallas that he actually developed a three-point shot. He was very good in the latter half of his career from three, so he can possibly teach you know those guys how he adjusted his stroke and was able to become an efficient three-point shooter. Because you're right, when you look at shooting, I see Chris Middleton, I see O.J. Mayo, and then when you look at the 2015 draft class, Rashad Vaughn out of yeah. UNLV was heralded as the second best shooter behind Devin Booker coming out of Kentucky, but the problem is all three of those guys play the same position and they're all three not going to be on the court at the same time. But you know, Chris Middleton excuse me, has a lot of size and you can bump him over to the three. You know, it's all how how you want to work it, how, you, how creative can you be as the head coach um, where your assistants say, maybe we should try this matchup tonight or whatever. So that'll that'll work itself out, I think. But, I mean, again, I'm I'm sticking with what I say when I see, just look at this roster. I see so much talent, so much um, talent that is it's not just straight up raw. Like like we talked about the Orlando Magic, uh, I believe last week when we talked about them, we talked about how they're a young, fun, raw team. This team is this Milwaukee Bucks team is is young and they're fun, but they're a little more. They've already been cooking for a little while. They're not as raw. They're not that fresh. You know, just just killed me. Um, and so I really like this team. Well, we're going to take our last break of the show today. When we come back, we're going to just highlight other news from the NBA that's been going on. And there's a lot to talk about because it's been uh, NBA Media Day from Friday and then also today. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on Weagle 91.1. 